Pump up the volume on your parenting with Parent Pump Radio. Tune into something different that makes a difference. At Parent Pump Radio, instead of a ripple, we choose to create a splash. Get energized, get inspired, and get informed with how to parent in the new millennium. With your host and parent coach super guide, Jacqueline T.D. Wynn. Hi, this is Jacqueline T.D. Wynn. Welcome to Parent Pump Radio. Our show is all about dynamic family leadership, financial freedom, and leaving a profound legacy for our children. Our guest is back. He is the founder and CEO of Pearl Lemon, a multi-award winning SEO agency in London. He is the youngest son of five children to migrant parents who came from India for a better life. He's the uncle to nine nieces and nephew. He spent most of his life around children and spent the best part of his 20s living like one. What he does now is he owns a marketing agency and software company. He's also a TEDx speaker, ultra marathon runner. When I say ultra, I mean he's done 33 so far. It's pretty incredible. And he spends his spare time learning to connect, educate, and inspire children in his family. And he's here today to inspire the children in your family. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you again to Deepak Shukla. Hi, Deepak. Hey, it's uh, it's really good to be back. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for what we're going to talk about today. And hey, everybody, if you remember me. <laughs> yes, if you uh, did not catch our show last week, please go back there because what we talked about was how your kids can learn from gaming. So it's not all bad. Right? We, we talked about some ways that you could help your kids look at gaming as a business because as parents, we're trying to fight something that's really not going to go away. It's a tsunami. <laughs> right. Yes, exactly. It's a tsunami that's staying. It's not retreating. Yeah, it's going to come yeah, farther. Yeah. And I think we talked about how with this whole virus thing, it's actually even creating more gaming, probably people at home playing. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think kids are staying at home more. They still want to connect with their friends from school. So they get onto, you know, the games that they'd normally be playing in, in, in the evenings and just sit on there and talk to them whilst they game. You know, I see it every day. And I'm sure parents, if you're listening, you probably connect with, you know, your boy at home sitting, playing Fortnite or Grand Theft Auto or something else and just gaming for hours on end. Yeah. Last week's show and today's show is really about not fighting the system anymore, just kind of joining the system. And so how as parents can we, because really ultimately what we want is for our children to be successful. We look at the big picture, right? We want them to be able to earn their own money, be successful. We worry that, oh my gosh, they're in front of the game all the time. So how can they be successful? But if we knew that gaming was going to create that success, I don't think parents would be so much in fear. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, that that recognition, there's a whole hugely growing economy around gaming as an actual sport that, that, that is, you know, all the hype now. I mean, they fill out thirty to forty thousand strong stadiums, you know, in 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 Korea, in parts of the Asia Pacific, and it's. I think own well, not I think it's only going to follow here. I say here depends on where you're listening, but in the West, it will only follow. And there's 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 there's, there's, there's you know teenagers, children, and young adults that are really earning a serious income having the opportunity to meet you know international sports stars and it represents to be honest with you a, a vast economy that oftentimes begins with you know your young boy at home you know playing his butt off on a game and a parent probably being frustrated by it and you know part of the journey is to reframe your thinking and to see you know well how can i not how can i enable but how can I make the most of, you know, the fact that, you know, my kid's going to going to gain. So, you know, how can I help him be productive whilst he spends his time here? I was fighting it for a while until I actually spoke to you and I got so excited about what you're doing with your nephew. Yeah. Yeah. With James. <laughs> and it kind of gave me a light bulb. Like, wait a minute. Right. Like, I never yeah, thought of yeah. it this way. So tell us what you're doing with James really quick, though. Yeah, so one of the other things, so if you listened last week, you know, I'll ask him to do perform a SWOT analysis uh, of the game. What are the strengths of the people that you play with? What are, you know, what are the weaknesses 
of the people you play? What are the weaknesses of the game? What are the weakness weaknesses of the environment? So understanding the multifaceted layers to not only a game, but that also translates to arguments. Like nothing happens in isolation. That's what we got to realize that, you know, you learn a lesson in business and you can apply that same concept in sport and vice versa. You go backpacking in, you know, Australia, Canada, New Zealand. It'll also teach you a lot about backpacking in Australia, Singapore and Shanghai. So we've got to lose this concept of this being a exclusive bucket. Everything is intermingled. It has implications upon, you know, all of the other things that we do. So we've got the SWOT analysis. We've got the, you know, overall strategy that you apply to both the game as well as your environment. So there's all these interesting layers. And and then when you couple that with one of the games that I play with James, where I would have him talk on the subject of a game that he loves for 60 seconds and try and convince me why a particular character was the best. So I'd teach him pitching skills. We'd work through persuasion skills. The game would be, James, you're going to talk to me about Grand Theft Auto, and you're going to explain to me why it's such an amazing game, and you've got to speak for 60 seconds without using the word uh or um or you know or hmm. You've got to just pitch it eloquently like, you know, and, uh, you know, so, you know, is a great example of, and you'd be like, okay, okay. So you can, you can, you can also, once the more you learn about their game, the more it teaches us about gamifying education as well. Right. I mean, go to the masters, the, the Zen masters of gamifying everything are games. <laughs> it's not the other way around. <laughs> so go yeah. to the source and think about, well, how can I gamify this boring thing that I'm trying to teach him that he doesn't care about. How can I make it seem more real? So, so, so that was another example that we'd often do. And he's become such a more competent public speaker now because of the pitching practice that we would do around gaming, where I'd ask him to begin to talk about Fortnite, then to begin a 60 second pitch about a character, then to pitch 60 seconds about just an item of clothing that was on the character and he would develop, you know, these really good skills of tonal modulation, of slowing things down, of playing with his voice, and just all of these funny tricks that he do to try and a Toastmaster world champion. Yeah, in, right? yeah, <laughs> yeah. And 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 you know, it's uh, it's 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 all of these little nuances. When you, uh, you know, part of the education is is reframing the way that us adults and parents think about games. We see it as the enemy, but but see it for the opportunity that it presents, you know, if, if, if your kids, if your kids going to spend all day playing basketball, then see how you can bring math to the, to the ball court. Don't try and take the ball away from the kid. It's, it's, it's just not going to end well for anybody. Good point. So we're going to dive in and join them. Since we talked, we, you were talking about developing a pilot program since yeah. it's been so great for your nephews. Walk us through as parents, what this pilot program is about. How can some parents just start on their own to help their kids right now? Absolutely. So I'm, I'm, I'm calling it the BKG program, uh, Business, Kids and Gaming. So that's, that's kind of the idea, BKG, Business, Kids and Gaming. And, and first of all, you know, what, what, what I'm aiming, what I've inadvertently done, I guess, with, with James, and, and I'll kind of walk you through that, like the challenge that, or rather the, the opportunity that I've had perhaps is that I have spent the last decade running small businesses for myself effectively. So it's kind of the culture that I've become accustomed to. So what I inadvertently did with James was I thought, God, James, and I remember the, 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 the turning point. He was like, oh, dad, 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 I want to I wanna upload my video on YouTube. And what he'd done was he'd taken his mobile phone and he'd record, he'd got his friend to record him gaming and just talking about gaming. Like, yeah, man, so now we're on Fortnite, we're on the next level. Yeah, guys, cool, etc. cetera, da 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 And um, he was trying to figure out how to upload a video on YouTube and then send it to his friends. And he was struggling with how he'd take it from his phone. Fu- there was just like a lot of barriers that were in his way. And his dad, um, Rob, bless him, I think in his busyness, missed the wider opportunity that this presented. I think he didn't necessarily appreciate, uh, which is fine, that don't worry about like 
think about the actual education he's interested in learning that will come as a byproduct of getting his game online. He's going to learn how to take a video from his mobile phone and put it onto YouTube. He's then going to probably want to name it. Maybe he'll want a thumbnail. Maybe he'll want to add a description. Maybe he'll even want to rank it. Then he's going to have a YouTube channel. Then he'll maybe want people to subscribe, then like, then comment. And these are all very, very useful skills in today's age. You know, the man, man of old knew how to, you know, fix a tire, um, change, change, change a tire rather, fix the tap. Today, 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 I think that the, the core skills are internet competency. It's like know how to set up the Wi-Fi, know how to upload a stream a YouTube video, know how to do a podcast. So I have put together ultimately um, a program that I've taken James upon, which is where we we, we take a, a key game for James's Fortnite, and we looked at ultimately building a a website that we would put content on on the website, and ultimately start to build a resource for other gamers to connect with to potentially ultimately purchase skins, which are like um, clothing or camouflage for some of the characters. So James loved the idea of skins within Fortnite. He wanted to put content out about the world. And I found in his videos, he'd always talk about the different skins he was collecting. Then I looked into this world of skins and I saw there was a whole economy around it. There were people making a couple of thousand bucks a month just selling skins building a skin and selling a skin. And I thought, this is fascinating. How do we get James from point A, he loves this game, yeah. to point B, selling his own skins? So I said to James, like, James, would you like to sell your own skins? He's like, what? People are selling skins. And I was like, yeah, they are. And he was like, whoa. And it just like, it just blew his mind. He thought, wow, I can I can be, you know, like a hustler, so to speak, you know, learning how to how to do this thing. So then we just went on this wicked journey of, okay, great. So we're going to need to get yourself a YouTube channel, but first we're going to need to think of a name and then we're going to think, need to think of a domain name. And he's like, well, what's a domain name? But then we're going to have to register a domain name. Then we're going to need a budget. We're going to probably need about a hundred bucks. So he's like, I don't have a card. I don't have a hundred bucks. So like, okay, great. So we're going to set up a virtual wallet for you. He's like, what's a virtual wallet? And I was like, right, I'll give you a PayPal. So we went on this whole journey of, him having a PayPal created, him having the actual virtual wallet created, him using that to begin to make his own transactions, to register a domain name, to understand that you need a unique domain name, to then need a logo for the domain, and all of these other elements that, that, that are kind of, is part now of this program called Business Kids and Gaming, where you take a child on the journey where the input is, game that they really really enjoy the research that is attached to that is identifying different ways that you could develop an income based upon that game that they enjoy and the output is ultimately a finished product of some kind whether it's probably a working website or an active youtube channel that allows the child on a regular basis to contribute to either the website or to the youtube channel and have at least one item for sale that someone else can buy and that's kind of the journey that you take them take them through and, and this is what you know i've i've almost finished up doing with james <laughs> he's not gonna want to go back to school <laughs> it's uh, it's opened his eyes to a whole different world it's just he's just he's you know they as the cliche goes and, and rightfully so this is the stuff that i think i would want my child to know so i'm like dude this is this is this is the new world this is the land of the brave and these are skills that you can take anywhere in the world with you, even if you end up doing nothing related to gaming, but knowing how to set up your own website, do register as a 13, 14 year old kid, having a fluency with all of those things. Yes. And understanding like a budget, even if it's a hundred dollars and, you know, I introduced him to the website called Fiverr. He was, you know, I showed him that he could hire someone in the Philippines or Pakistan or India to write a piece of content. He's like, oh, it's not very good. I said, that's okay. You can get your sister to edit the content now. He's like, oh, yeah. And then, he, you know, we, we hired a writer. All of these things came as a consequence fundamentally for the core thing. He loved this idea that he could make some income from something that he loved. And, and at its core, this is what we are all as adults go and spend thousands of dollars listening to Tony Robbins to, 
to listening to all of these motivational speakers. And yet we don't do it with our children when it comes to these areas because we've got these negative preconceptions about them. But this is what your child loves. And you know what? More likely than not, his passion will probably change as he progresses. But there's a lot of value that you can find within that space if you choose to run with it and, and, and use it as a vehicle to teach them all of these wonderful things, you know, about the world. Marathon running, Jack Lynn, has took me to Chicago, Rio. It's led me to couch surfing, to Airbnb, to hostels, to hotels, to doing, you know, travels along by myself, going for a weekend just to run a marathon and then coming home, you know, in, in 25 different countries, I think I ran in. And all of it was fueled by my desire just to run. And that's why I've seen the world. And that's why I've done all of these backpacking trips you've spoken of. So if we take that, and this is what I, I, I build and, you know, teach the parent, because part of the program is not just about the child. It's also about the parent. <laughs> the parent is equal learner in this process. Oh, yes. I think we're probably more of a learner because we have no clue on any of this process. But I love how you said it. it's really just all about the experience. You and I have done the backpacking thing, travel around the world. How did that make us money? It didn't. What it did was it gave us knowledge and that feeling of experience and how we can apply just that adventurous spirit into our business. And I think that's what you're saying is they might not make a living out of gaming later on, but the concept that you're teaching them about business, about strength, weaknesses, opportunity, the threats, it's going to help them no matter what they do in their life. Yeah, it's, it's a methodology that they learn. It's a framework. And it's like, you know what, there is the, 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 you know, the formula for success about working hard and applying different criteria. You know, these are things that they teach at, you know, Sigma Six companies, at management consulting firms, at investment banks. It's the same thing. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> and yes, you can teach it to a 13-year-old boy through the vehicle of gaming. Teach him about, you know, Porter's Five Forces. Teach him about the SWOT analyses. Teach him about, you know, present risks and opportunities and different economic models that he could apply to gaming when we brainstorm ways that we can make 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 an income but then what about an arbitrage model where if you buy from here this skin then you're going to need to resell it so you can't sell it to the same guy so where's a different marketplace where it's like oh i can sell i can sell it i can buy it from james for two dollars but this guy doesn't know as much about him so i can sell it to him for six dollars so, so why doesn't he know what's happened what is this we call that a market inefficiency and it's it's how outsourcing works it's what companies do all around the world so there's, 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 you know, I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about it because these are things I think that, you know, are so much more effectively driven home through the vehicle of gaming. And that's how you teach, you know, a child about fundamentals of business and economics, even if they're an art student, even if they've got nothing to do or no interest in, you know, business at all. Yeah, exactly. The other thing great about your program is most of us parents, we're busy also trying to do our own thing. We're working, we're taking care of the family. We may not have time to teach them all these things. And well, first of all, before we teach, we have to know where we have to get the knowledge. And so I think that's great about what you're doing is you have the knowledge. Now, all we do is kind of just guide them to this program. We know that our children are in good hands to learn about how gaming and business are really interlaced. Absolutely. It's, uh, it, I think it's a big opportunity. And I've been, you know, by, by accidental fortune, been able to, 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 to develop this just falling around with my nephew. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. When we talked offline, you've been doing this to your nephew. And we didn't even know what we were going to talk about in this interview. And all of a yeah. sudden, between the both of us talking, <laughs> it was like light bulbs were going off. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> Oh, it's incredible. It's been incredible since we first spoke. And, and really, like, I thank you so much for, you know, helping me um, awaken myself to what was really going on here. And, and, and you, know, you know, it all came from having that initial chat and trying to find a way that made sense and, 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 and talking, you know, and, and realizing that oh, actually, you know, this apparently, as it turns out, this stuff that I screw around with my nephew James doing to keep him a bit more engaged is 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 has become you know is there's there's something there 
that I I would love the opportunity to share it with, you know, to your audience and people beyond that. Who knows, maybe you'll have a a website separate from your SEO or at least extension of it for parents to to go to. Yeah, I think so. I, I really think I'd love to, you know, the more we talk about it, the more I'm like, this is this is something as I discover, not enough or maybe no one, I don't know, but very few people at least are, are, are teaching and realizing that gaming is here to stay. So how do we use it to, you know, enlighten our child's life to the world of business? I can tell you, I know no program for kids to do this. I can tell you also that parents are very frustrated that A, we don't know what to do. We know people are making lots of money with gaming and we know our kids are doing a lot of gaming, but we don't know how to bridge that gap. And we're very busy as parents. We're trying to make money. We're paying the bills. We're teaching them just values and life in general, teachers meeting and all these things that I, for me, even, you know, as a single mom is even crazier. I don't have time to, you know, to learn about all this stuff and teach them. I think you should do some research and see if there's anything like this out there. But you, we just, I think we might have just touched on a, on something, something very huge. new. Huge. Yeah. 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 Really. I think that, you know, see, seeing your reaction and thinking about my sister and, and my brother in law and this being the thing that I do in the family. And I'm excited, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I think yeah. there's so much to it. And, 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 you know, I don't know of anything either, but I want to go away and do the research now and look at building this program and, and, and seeing, you know, what kind of feedback I get once I talk to, of course, more parents. And thankfully, parents are not in short supply. So. <laughs> no. And you're going to find lots of parents with boys that are playing video game. I, I don't think there's one yeah. teenage or preteen boys that are not playing video games. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> For the parents who are a little confused mm. about how to go about doing this with their kids, what do you suggest for them? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. So I think that in terms of practical next steps, I think there's a couple of things. I think like A, it could be potentially useful to bring in someone within the wider family if there is someone mm-hmm. who's kind of more familiar with gaming. I, th- I, I think, of course, there's the, the, the challenge is, of course, the balance that finding someone who can who can kind of bridge the gap um is is going to be the challenge but but i think it's also then potentially about just reframing how they 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 see their kids gaming so so number one you could find out what are the favorite games that your children play number two once you find it out let's just take keep using the same you know um same example Fortnite. it's a very popular game it's you know it's uh it's a roaming, it's, it's an RPG, a role play, a multi world role playing game. So you could look up Fortnite, you could look up the kind of game that it is, you could look up the, the most famous characters, you could look up, you know, success stories around it, you could look up the economics around it. And, and then you could also just commit to, without judgment, playing the game, whether it's with your actual son or with your, a friend of yours who's also a mother or a father, yeah. and say, you know what, let's play this damn game together yeah. and let's just try and figure some stuff out and let's just see if we can have some fun along the way. So I think that we've got to treat it less like a scary object Got it. and start peeling away the layers slowly and, and, and through familiarity, confidence can come. And from confidence, you can begin to make some of those inroads because right. um, you know, some of these, the, the, these concepts – of, of, of economics and applying it to gaming, you know, it's, 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 it's merely a case of getting over the obstacle. And the obstacle is literally our ignorance of the actual gaming rather than anything else. That's a good point, right? We just even just step halfway into their world to kind of see where their, the, where their framework is. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I think that, that's, that they would be the first steps that I'd recommend. And, and from there, you can begin to brainstorm you know ideas that involve a business and you know certainly if it's not a business it doesn't need to be it could be the whole process of streaming your child playing the game and commentating and having that being the end goal okay jim or james or frank or junior because you spend an hour a day playing this game your goal if you choose to accept it is to get out one video a day or five minutes uploaded to a YouTube channel just talking about what you're doing. And there's still, again, so many skills that are involved in 
talking about it. Maybe they need to edit the video. Then they need to upload it. Then they need to make sure it uploads properly. Then they need a Google account. Then they need to verify their YouTube. There's all of these little steps that a lot of people aren't familiar with. But, you know, it's also going to be a self-education because, hey, it's also a good thing for a parent to know those things. Well, hopefully your program is going to just walk them through this. all of them. Exactly. Exactly. It will. (laughs) Okay. Your website, pearllemon.com, really has your SEO. It doesn't really have what we're talking about yet. Absolutely. It doesn't. It doesn't. I think that, um, you know, what I am going to do is just ask people if they wanted to email me maybe. So what I'll do is I'll also give you my, my email address in the in the show notes and you can just have people directly email me because none of the stuff I'll see will relate to this. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. Um, and you can also just go to uh, De- Deepak's website and just message him and just tell him that you you heard about the show and you're more you're interested in more information. Deepak spells his name D like David, double E like Edward, P like Paul, A K S H U K L. A is also in the show note. You can just Google his name and it'll come up. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, well, thank you so much, Dupak. And I am looking forward to this adventure together with you. I'm going to see what happens. Uh, I'm, I'm excited, Jacqueline. It all started from an innocent conversation we had together and look where we are now. I know, right? <laughs> right. Okay, listeners, until next time, always be learning and always be growing. Thank you so much for joining us today. Go to parentpumpradio.com and click on the pink box on the top of our homepage to listen to our new and archived shows. To be instantly notified of new episodes, subscribe to our RSS feed. The RSS feed button is located at the top of the page where all our shows are featured. And after listening to the show, go to parentpumpradio.com or our Facebook page to leave your comments, questions, and topic suggestions. Until next time, have a wonderful week.